Quantum computing has just been revolutionized in ways certain experts did see it's coming. While tech giants struggle with massive machines requiring temperature cooler than space, for decades, quantum computers have needed massive rooms, extreme cooling, and billions of funding. What if, if I told you that scientists in Taiwan just change everything? They have built quantum computers that sit on your desk, work at room temperature, and runs on something incredible, a single particle of light. This isn't just another tech breakthrough. At Impaxel, we analyze results and sparked a lot of curious questions. Like, can you stop aging and live forever scientifically? Can you walk till moon? If yes, how? If not, why? Is banana radioactive? If yes, then what would be its impact? What if Earth had multiple moons? How close are we to achieving light speed travel? Each answers lead to more fascinating questions about our universe. From quantum physics to mysteries of consciousness, from revolutionary space tech to groundbreaking medical discoveries, we deep dive into verified scientific research to answer your biggest questions. Every video is backed by peer review research with all sources linked below. No hype, no exaggeration, just pure scientific curiosity. Join our community of curious minds who wants to understand not just what is happening in science, but why it matters. Let's start with why we are in quantum computing right now. For years, we've been building quantum computers primarily in two ways using superconducting qubits, that's what giants like IBM and Google use, and trapped ion systems like, like what IonQ develops. Both these approaches have massive challenges as they either need extremely low temperature or incredibly complex laser system just to work. To understand why this new breakthrough is so revolutionary, we first need to understand four essential requirements for quantum computing. First, we need quantum bits or qubits that can exist in multiple states simultaneously, what we call superposition. Second, the quantum states need to stay stable long enough to actually do the calculations. And third, we need precise control over these states to perform operations. And fourth, we need to be able to read out our results accurately. And now, here's Professor Chu Chi Sung's team has done something absolutely remarkable. Instead of using traditional qubits, they have developed a system using just a single photon, one particle of light, as their quantum information carrier. But wait, let's break down exactly what they have achieved because this is very fascinating. First, let's talk about their photon architecture. They are using something called time bin encoding. Imagine silicon time itself into 32 discrete segments. Each of the segments can carry quantum information. And because we are working with quantum mechanics, each segment can exist in multiple states simultaneously. It's like having a 32 dimensional quantum system all packed into a single photon. Now, Here's where it gets really interesting. Traditional quantum computers need cooling to near absolute zero because any heat will destroy their quantum states. But what about photons? They naturally maintain their quantum states at room temperature. The team achieved this through a brilliant design using link shaped optical fiber system. Let me show you what this system can actually do. They have demonstrated prime factorization using source algorithm that not just a proof of concept, that's a functional quantum processing system. And they are doing this with significantly less power than traditional systems. From a physics perspective, this is revolutionary for three key reasons. First, let's talk about quantum coherence. Traditional systems struggles with something we call decoherence, basically quantum information getting lost to the environment. This photonic system maintains coherence at room temperature 
to precise optical engineering. Second, the scalability potential is enormous. Instead of electronic circuits, they are using potential pathways. This reduces interference issues and opens up possibilities for scaling through potential integrated circuits. And third, this is a game changing for energy efficiency. No cryogenic cooling needed, minimal power consumption and optical processing is inherently energy efficient. Now let me explain why this matters in the real world. First think about quantum communication. This system can directly integrate with existing optical fiber networks. That means we could potentially have quantum repeaters without any cooling requirements. For commercial applications, this is huge. We are talking about dramatically reduced operational costs, minimal infrastructure needs, and potential for mass production using existing manufacturing techniques. And for research, the applications are immediate quantum chemistry simulations, optimization problem, machine learning acceleration, all possible on a desktop sized device. Now, I will be doing my job if I didn't address the current limitations. Scaling this system will be challenging. We need extremely reliable single photon sources. And maintaining quantum operations with multiple photons is complex. We also need to develop new error correction protocols, especially for this architecture. Looking ahead, here, what we can expect? In the near term, we are likely to see improvement in the number of time beams per photon, better gate fidelity and more sophisticated quantum algorithm design especially for this architecture. For long term goal, we are looking for potential integration with quantum networks, develop for photonic quantum processors and maybe even room temperature quantum memory systems. What we are seeing here is more than just a new type of quantum computer. It's potentially a compute paradigm shift in how we approach quantum computing. This could be development that finally make quantum computing practical and accessible. I'll be following this development closely and I promise to keep you updated on any new breakthroughs. If you believe in power of understanding why and appreciate the effort we put into bringing you verified scientific content, Show your support by subscribing to Impaction. Hit the notification bell because science never stops surprising you and you won't want to miss what's coming next. Here we have a quick question for you. Which molecule is called aging clock in our cells? Is it DNA? Is it RNA? Telomeres or proteins? Drop your answer below and we'll give a heart reaction to correct answers. Want to understand the science behind it? Watch our detailed video explaining this fascinating process with peer review research. If you love exploring science's biggest mysteries, hit subscribe to join Impaxel. See you next time.